Hey guys, this is Rob with another Revit electrical video. Have you ever wondered how Revit behind the scenes calculates demand load for your electrical loads? Well, I'm going to deep dive into that subject. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. If you are to look at your electrical fixtures or lighting fixtures, you will see that the load is classified based upon its type. I showed this when I showed how to install receptacles and install miscellaneous motor connections and things like that. So if we look at the motor connections, we have a number of things like an elevator. If I go to the type properties of this elevator, remember in here, under electrical, you have phase and voltage, but you also have the load classification. So this is what we are covering is, what does that mean? There's a number of different kinds of load classifications that we can choose from. And how does that affect our calculations? Associated with this load classification, you can see a demand factor. We will cover that as well. So let's take a look at how this works. I've put up some description here. I'll read to you and then we'll get into some examples. But first of all, the load classifications are the names of load types used for separating various electrical loads into classes or categories for itemizing how much load is connected or demanded for different types of electrical equipment. Hence, elevator, kitchen equipment, EV charging, receptacles, lighting. Those are load classifications. And they are useful for understanding the electrical load makeup of various categories for energy study reasons. And I have found it specifically for informing the serving electric utility for their infrastructure needs. The utilities are getting very specific about load breakups, breakdowns of the load. They want to know how many motors or how much load is motors, how much load is is HVAC, how much load is EV charging. They need to know that to apply their own demand factors. So this is a great way to itemize and separate our loads. And examples are lighting, general lighting, exterior, receptacles, HVAC, pumps, specifically a fire pump, elevator, EV charging, refrigeration, existing loads, future loads, dwelling units, all these different kinds of classifications we can separate our loads into. And Revit does contain many built-in classifications, but they're also very easy to add to or to modify. Think of using Excel spreadsheets for this type of thing, where we had a, a pre-made panel schedule or load summary. There was only four or five load classifications, and they were not easy to add or, or modify. And then each different load classification will then have an assigned demand factor applied to it, which does the math, typically code driven, to calculate a demand load from that connected load. So that's what a load classification is. And here's examples of what they are. If you go to the manage tab up top here, you'll find MEP settings. And within there, you'll find load classifications. So click on that and you can see the list in this project. This is our sample project, but it looks pretty much like our template. You will find all of the load classification types. For example, I mean, there's a lot here that we don't even use, but we have existing load, 30-day metered. We have HVAC. We have non-dwelling or commercial kitchen equipment. Different kinds of lighting. If you want to break up your lighting into interior, exterior, hospital, you know, warehouse lighting, things like that. Generic motor, or you can have refrigeration. And like I say, there's some in here that we don't even have in this project. We could add fire pump. We can easily add other kinds of loads. So that's a load classification. And each of these load classifications gets a demand factor applied to it. So let's look at what is a demand factor. Well, this is the other half. Demand factors are, are the formulas or the calculation tables 
which are applied to the above mentioned load classifications to calculate the demand load for sizing feeders, overcurrent protection services, etc. And again, they are typically code driven. And they can be confusing because many demand factor names are the same name as their load classification. Like we saw above, kitchen non dwelling load classification, the demand factor had the same name. So that can be confusing. I get it. Um, but there's no requirement that they do match. For an example, under lighting, we could have a lighting load classification. We could have a demand factor just called continuous load that would be the 125%. So they don't have to match. And also many different load classifications can share the same demand factor. We could apply that, for example, that continuous load demand factor. We could apply it to lighting. We could apply it to you know, other things as well. Within the demand factor window that I'm going to show you, there's pretty much three different calculation methods. Instead of just typing formulas like an Excel spreadsheet, they have built-in methods of doing these things by a table or just percentages. For example, there's a calculation method for just a constant multiplier for like lighting, which would be 125%. That's just a constant. Or by quantity of loads connected, the quantity of kitchen commercial kitchen equipment, or the quantity of EV charging points you have. You can also set up calculations by the actual load. For example, in receptacles, the, the demand calculation is related to how much load do you have of receptacles, and it steps. So you can also add additional load to those as a set quantity if you wanted a fudge factor or something like that, but that's not common. And then you set up the tables for the range of quantities or loads with corresponding demand factors to arrive at the final demand load. So let's look at that. It always helps to have an example. So under MEP settings again, we have demand factors. Now again, this list is going to look very much like the load classification list. And, and that's confusing. But this actually has the formulas for these demand factors, which get then applied to the load classification. So let us look for an example at a lighting to see how the constant works. So let's go with lighting general. The calculation method is constant. And as you can see, there's constant by quantity or by load. So it's constant, applies a constant demand factor to the load in the load classification. The demand factor is 125%, a continuous load. And then here's the option to add additional load, which we don't typically use. So that's simply a 125% of the connected load to get the demand. That's a simple one. Now what's another one? By quantity. Let's look at the commercial kitchen, which is kitchen equipment, non-dwelling. So this is commercial. This is done by quantity, not constant or load. Okay, so now this gets a little more complicated. You can have total at one percentage, or we can have incrementally for each range. So what we have is you have for quantity of kitchen equipment. If you have zero, greater than zero, so one and less than or equal to two, so one or two, it's a 100% demand factor. For greater than two, less than a three, so if you have actual three, it's 90%. If you have four, so it's greater than three, less than or equal to four, so it's exactly four, it's an 80%. If you have five, it's 70%, and if you have Greater than five and unlimited, so that means six or more, is 65%. So this is a total at one percentage. It's not stepped incrementally. If you have four, you get 80%. So that's one method of doing by quantity. And then we have by load. And let's look at the receptacle. For example, the receptacle one is done by load. You can have the total at a percentage or incrementally for each range. So this is what they're saying. For the first 100 kVA is 100%, and the next 50 kVA is 50%, things like that. So what we have for receptacles, if you recall, it's 10 kVA at 100% plus 50% of the rest. So the way that's done in this table, greater than zero, less than or equal to 10 kVA or 10,000 VA. 
is 100%. Now, anything greater than 10 kVA to unlimited is at 50%. And so this adds the loads based upon these levels and demand factors. So that gives you an idea of three different types of calculations. So what I want to do finally in this example is to actually create our own demand factor and apply it to our EV charging load classification. So load classification, we already have EV charging. And in another video, I showed how to uh, create a family of dual port EV charging points and we applied load classification of EV charging to that. Now we need to apply demand factor to that load. So right now it's just randomly set up as appliance dwelling unit. We don't have EV charging as a demand factor yet, so we need to create that. So let's figure out how to create that. Now, I said many of, much of this is code driven, and the NEC doesn't have specific demand factors for EV charging. It just says it's a continuous load. But some states have adopted alternate calculation methods to allow us to diversify EV charging loads based upon how many we have. For example, in the state of Oregon, we have a, it came out a few years ago, we have a statewide alternate method for calculating electrical vehicle charging equipment services and feeders. So down here, when we get to the meat of this, they're saying, considering EV charging equipment is continuous load, assumes that all charging equipment is likely to operate at full rated load for three hours or more. But testing data has shown that charging currents are substantially below the full rated load and that cycle times typically do not exceed three hours. Therefore, it is not actually a continuous load. So the scope of the ruling says the acceptability of using the demand factor table below to calculate loads for electric vehicle charging stations as an alternative to assuming a continuous load is contingent upon meeting the following. And then you go through all these things. So what it comes down to is here is the demand factor chart that we are going to put into our Revit demand factor to apply to our EV charging. So how does this work? Number of charging, one through four is 100%. Five through eight, 90%. Nine through 14, 80%. So this reminds me of dwelling unit calcs too, when you have a multifamily. Depending on the number of apartments you are feeding depends on the actual diversity. Okay, so let's see how this applies to our project. Let us create our own demand factor for EV charging and apply it to our load classification. So we want to create, under demand factors, we want to create a new demand factor. Let's call it EV charging. And again, this will match the same name as the load classification, but that's okay, we can, we can understand that now. Based on, upon the pure NEC definition, we would have to go 125% for a continuous load. However, we are going to apply um, the Oregon rules, and I could even call this EV charging Oregon if I wanted to further define this. So let's go to by quantity, since that table is quantity. So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So let us set up six rows. There's one, add another one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six rows. I find it best to add all the rows first and then start putting in numbers. So from zero or greater than zero, so from one to four, it was 100%. Now greater than four, so five to eight is 90. So greater than four would be five to eight is 90. And they do greater than, so it's a little different than our table. So now we want it put in greater than eight. 
So from 9 to 14 is 80. 14 is 80. Furthermore, greater than 14, so 15 to 30 is 70. 30 is 70. And then 31 to 40 is 60. So next break is 40 would be 60%. You see the pattern here. And then above 40 is 50%. So that does our table for the EV charging. Say so, okay. Now we want to make sure we go back up to our load classification and apply that demand factor to our EV charging. So now we can apply a demand factor EV charging, which happens to be also called EV charging. So now any of our EV chargers that we connect, as long as we apply EV charging to the load classification when we put it in, it will use that calculation. Let's go back to our site plan. We had put in this EV charging point right here. So let's double check to make sure we have it set properly. We have it set to EV charging for both of these circuits built into this dual port charger. And they're hooked up to panel 1A. So if we were to go look at panel 1A, there should be categories at the bottom, load classifications for EV charging, which they are. Now in this case, we only have two. So we are still in the 100% range. If we were to add more, we would find that this demand factor would start dropping to 90, 80, 70. So that's how that works. And again, if you look at the main distribution board, we have HVAC as a classification, receptacles, and EV charging. And as we do more and more on this project, we will have lighting. We will have elevators. We will have, you know, things that we classify them as to help us itemize and sort our loads so we can see how much connected and demand we have for each classification. So I hope that's helpful for your understanding of load classifications and demand factors. Until the next time.